I do want to play Super Mario RPG Remake. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> I absolutely want to play it. I, I love the game. I played it four years ago. I loved that playthrough. Oh yeah, DSP. I remember you liked that playthrough, but it was absolutely boring as sin. And I don't think it was just detractors who felt like that. I'm pretty sure your audience didn't like the game much either. And I can't blame them because those style of games really just don't mesh with you at all. In my opinion, a lot of games don't mesh with you because you just straight up don't like them and you complain the entire time, but that's besides the point. But anytime you try and play an old school turn-based RPG, it is just the most boring thing ever. Just like when you played that Final Fantasy pick Pixel Remaster or when you played Chrono Trigger. I don't know, it just seems like there's never anything interesting going on and it's just you reading dialogue and menus the entire time. And you're not exactly the most interesting reader I've ever heard. I also know it's a shorter game. Like a lot of people are afraid, oh, it's an RPG, the game's so long. It's not, it's under 20 hours. It's a much shorter Square Enix RPG than people think. It's not like a giant 40 hour Final Fantasy experience. It's a much more streamlined game. It has a lot of content. It has a lot of fun dialogue and cool narrative, but it's not, a game that kind of overstays its welcome, right? Let's put it that way. That's entirely subjective, though, because if you don't like that style of game, immediately it's overstaying its welcome. But I know that's not what he was talking about, and I'm just playing the semantics game. But it'll never not be strange to me how obsessed with keeping a schedule he is. Anytime he talks about what game he's going to play, he's always talking about how long it'll take, when he can fit it in, what games are coming up after it. He can't just play a game that his audience wants to see. He can't just play a game and enjoy it. He has to worry about everything that's going on around it well before he even knows that he's going to play it for sure. I understand wanting to have a plan and a rough outline of things that you are and aren't going to do, but at the end of the day, there's no hard set rules when you're a content creator online. It shouldn't be the end of the world that you don't get around to playing a game on time, whatever that even means, or at least it shouldn't be a big deal. Your audience shouldn't have that negative of a reaction to it. But I guess you never really know with the dents and LARPers because they're kind of a fickle bunch. Um, so I'm down for that and I want to play that, okay? But it's a Mario game and it's an RPG. So it's kind of like a double whammy. Are people going to show up and, and, and want to hang out and engage and support that playthrough? I don't know. You know, RoboCop is something that I kind of want to play at some point anyway. Like, I don't know if it would be right away or if it would end up being down the road. But I feel like RoboCop is the kind of game that I would want to play. I've said this before, it's definitely strange to me to see DSP play Mario games and interact with Nintendo games in general. And when I said that, I didn't really know why, and a lot of people did make it clear to me that it's because he's so cynical and angry about everything. That when he plays these games and they are happy-go-lucky and they have these joyous characters, it's just such a clash, it's jarring. So I understand why people don't want to watch him play Nintendo games. I totally get it, and thank you all for making me realize what the problem with him playing them was. I really appreciate that. But moving on from that, the way that he's described Describing how he wants to play RoboCop, it sounds like the exact opposite of the way he was talking for the past two months when people were asking if he was going to play it. Every time that somebody brought it up, he basically just shrugged it off and acted as if it was going to be a nothing burger and nobody was going to play it. Nobody cared and it was a waste of his time. But now that he sees people are playing it and it's a decent length and people are actually enjoying the content they're watching of it, all of a sudden he's interested in playing it. He wants to check it out. He basically did a full 180 on playing RoboCop just because he sees that other people are actually saying, it's a half decent game. Take that with a grain of salt though because I haven't looked into it personally and even then my opinions are always terrible on video games. I'm sure you're all well aware of that by now. The problem is, you know, right now, like buying it, I don't know, like, like I think it's still full price, correct? Like it's not like um, it's got a reduced price or anything like that. I'm, I'm just curious on, on Xbox here because I haven't even looked. Robocop, here it is. Why is the pre-order still available? The pre-order is still listed on Xbox Live. That's pretty silly. It's 60 bucks, you know? For a first-person shooter in 2023, 60 bucks, right? I mean, with so many game studios releasing their games at $80, I'm honestly surprised that RoboCop is only $60. Granted, it is a smaller studio, so that makes sense to me. But why would he expect it to be discounted price? It only came out November 2nd. It just seems strange to me that he would even bother mentioning that it's still full price because it actually just came out. I'm just gonna have to chalk this up to a sneak bag. It's just a subtle way for him to let people know that he doesn't have the money to pay full price for video games that they may or may not want to see. I feel like assuming that he's sneak begging when in doubt is always is a safe option and i don't know like again i feel like robocop we'd play it once or twice it'd be good but i feel like that's the kind of game that it works for a stream or two and then after that once you've seen what it is it ain't gonna be as interesting you know maybe i'm wrong because i haven't played it i just feel like that's a game that again it wouldn't really retain attention 
Well, DSP, I have an idea for you if you're unsure whether or not something will work for your audience. You could go on your phone and start looking up things about the game and maybe even watch some gameplay and then make your best guesstimation on whether or not the game is really meant for you and your audience. If you're really that concerned about it, you can look into it. You can do some research and then base your opinion and your decision off of the research that you've done. I know that this is a foreign concept to you. It's not something you're too particularly familiar with, but I would highly recommend that you start doing it because you might find your yourself in a better situation than you typically are all right here's the truth here's let me be completely transparently honest with all of you right now all right now remember when he says that he's being honest with everybody he's being transparent it doesn't actually mean that he's being honest it just means that he's being serious i just want to remind you guys of that because he's the only person who means that he's just being serious when he says that he's actually being honest and a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this but here's the truth it's been slow recently on my streams if you haven't noticed Number one, I got sick. I ended up losing out on a giant week of gaming when, number one, I was playing all the hot new releases, and it would have been a good supportive week. And then I missed out on my freaking Halloween marathon, which every year traditionally does really well, and I get tons of support. I got none of that this year. I don't know how much longer he can keep talking about how he got sick. I've never heard anybody talk about an illness as long as DSP is talking about this one. And it's not like he went to the hospital, he didn't have some sort of disease that he had to get taken care of. The dude either had a common cold or he had COVID. But the way he talks about it, you'd think he was knocking on death's door. Also, I always have to point out when he talks about it. The Halloween stream that he missed was entirely his fault because he could have done it late, he just refused to because he's too stubborn about his goddamn schedule. He has no one to blame but himself for that. Because if if he would have done it late, I think he would have got the same amount of support that he always does, and I think people still would have showed up like they always do. Also, before we're off the topic, I want to point out that he didn't point out the whole internet issue that he had before he was sick. That's just getting swept under the rug. Everybody just memory hole that. We're not talking about it anymore. I guess it's not important. The internet saga is no more. Even though it was that damn dirty detractor from the internet company that gave DSP the illness anyway. All right, none of it. And it sucks that I lost out on that. And then on top of that, these last couple of weeks since I've come back <clears throat> from being sick, we've had numerous days where there's been slow levels of support. And that sucks because right now, if things had been better, I'd be like, right now, here's what I want to do. I swear to God, this is what I want to do. I want to buy Super Mario RPG and I want to buy Robocop. Wow, imagine that DSP wants to pay full price for new video games and play them for his audience to maximize on the current popularity of these games right when they come out. Because that's so out of the ordinary, right? And next week, I want to have those two games start alternating as the daytime streams. And then on night streams, I want to do one stream of Street Fighter VI on Friday. And then I want to alternate on night streams between Like a Dragon Gaiden and, and Modern Warfare 3. Man, I can't express how upset that I am that Street Fighter VI is actually coming back. I was hoping that it was banned, 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 gone forever but unfortunately not and i'm honestly surprised that he's even taking into consideration still playing modern warfare 3 at this point because if you ask me from watching his gameplay and listening to him talk about the game while he's playing it i think it's about time for a rage quit on this one and i don't think him changing it from a night stream to a day stream is exactly gonna save the channel call me a skeptic but i don't think that that's the money move that he's been convinced that it is like that's what i want to do ideally that's exactly what i want to do but how am i supposed to do that when I've literally just went through two weeks of slow stuff and I lost out on a whole week of streaming because I was sick. You know what I'm saying? Well, DSP, you could have budgeted your money properly throughout the year, leaving enough by this time at the end of the year to still have money to buy the games that you need to buy and play for your business. I say need to buy and play, but I know that that's not exactly the case because there's tons of way cheaper games and games on Game Pass that you could be playing that your audience would be interested in seeing. But you're not interested in playing those because they're not the new hotness. So I'm just going to act as if buying and playing new games is an absolute necessity. But absolutely, yes, you could have budgeted properly throughout the year and this wouldn't have been a problem at all. It's a self-inflicted wound. Why would anybody feel bad for you? I wish that, I, that I, I lived in a world where things weren't like that and that I had full flexibility to do whatever I want. And I just don't. Yes, DSP, I'm sure that everybody wishes that they lived in a world that gave them full flexibility to do whatever they wanted. That's kind of the ultimate dream, isn't it? A world where you can do literally anything that you'd like. But I don't think that that's the case for actually anybody on the face of the planet. So I don't think that proclaiming this to your audience is exactly worth anybody's time whatsoever. You know, that's what I want to do. But I guess I can't, you know, like right now I'm faced with a situation where I can pretty much buy one game and still have enough for maybe like shopping tomorrow. You know what I mean? Because that's the week, that's how it's been. And it's like, well, that sucks. I don't like having those decisions.
right? But that's my decision right now, you know? Uh, you have to love how upset DSP gets when he's faced with the reality of the real world. Most people have to pick and choose what they spend money on. They don't just get to buy everything that they want because they still have responsibilities. They still have to pay their two big bills. They still have to buy groceries. So typically people do have to pick and choose what they do and don't spend their money on. But DSP is a vapid consumer. He doesn't care what he's buying. All he knows is that he has to buy. So not being able to make a purchase probably actually hurts him quite a lot. Because besides DSP, obvious addictions that being wwe champions and Jin, he's also addicted to spending money and that's always been the case look at how many statues he bought look at that 300 fight stick look at all of the credit that he racked up just going to game tournaments back in the day it just sucks and then you get someone dentron oh your youtube check is coming yeah my youtube check is, is way lower this month because I, I missed out on the end of October. I was way low on memberships. I was low. I missed out on a week of Super Chats. I missed out on a week of everything because I was sick. This is this is the story you won't hear from most YouTubers is that when you run your own business like this, right? Sadly, when you are sick, there's no sick pay. There's no days off. You just suffer for it. So I was sick and not only was I completely laid out where I couldn't work, now it, it will have this ripple effect for months and months. Yeah, I thank God that every YouTuber doesn't bring up their financials like you do, DSP. It's quite out of the ordinary that you do it at all. It kind of comes with the territory of being self-employed. Yes, there's no sick days. Yes, you are entirely reliant on the revenue that you can generate when you're a full-time content creator on the internet. But I don't think that other content creators put themselves in a situation where if they take a week off, it's going to have a ripple effect on their finances for multiple months at a time or whatever. It sounds like you just have poor decision-making skills and poor budgeting skills skills and it sucks ass i don't i hate this i want i r wish that this was the opposite and right now i could be like guys things are going good so you know what i'm gonna buy both games we're gonna have a week of all new gameplay on the day streams next week right Yes, and I'd love to give every single person who views my videos $100,000 every time they click on the video, but that's not applicable. That's not going to happen. It's not practical. So why are we bothering talking about it? I really do appreciate all of your guys' time, though. And it's funny because I'm not kidding you. Uh... I got a comment on my podcast yesterday, and I just read it this morning. Here was the comment. You ready? This I swear, this, this is the comment. I'm always so wary when he says that he swears that this is what they said, but he won't actually show it up on screen. Because it's not difficult to take a screenshot of something and put it into your OBS. So I don't know why he wouldn't go out of his way to just do that and actually prove that he's telling the truth. Because it's been proven before that you can't actually trust anything that this guy says. Phil, no other content creators seem to have the limitations you do. Everyone else out there will buy a game and play it for like a stream or two. That's their testing period, okay? During those two first sessions, they determine if it's a game that they like, if it's a game that their viewership likes, if it's a game that will have longevity and people will want to keep watching, and if people support it. And basically within two streams, they determine that. And if within two streams, that game has slowed down or they're not liking it, their audience doesn't like it, if there's not enough support, they just drop the game and they move on and they do something else. And all other streamers are like this, just not you. And like for some reason you hold yourself to this weird higher standard where when you start a game you have to finish it and no one else does that like it's very common practice with other gameplay streamers they don't just play a game from start to finish they constantly will jump around other games um until they find the ones that stick per se right DSP has to be the worst person to paraphrase in history because he always shoves in little tidbits that let you know that that's not what the person actually said. Specifically when he said that, oh, you hold yourself to a higher standard and actually finish the games. I don't think that they said that. They did not say the words higher standard. I'm not buying it. That was some stealthy self fellatio is all that was. But yes, DSP, other content creators that play video games typically try out games and find out whether or not they enjoy the game and their audience enjoys the game because they actually want their audience to have a good time and they also would like to have a good time. I don't know why this is a foreign concept to you. It seems pretty self-explanatory that if you're gonna try and entertain an audience with a video game, they might wanna actually enjoy the video game for a period of time. And when your audience is no longer enjoying a video game, it's not worth playing for them anymore. Not for financial reasons, but because your entire point should be to entertain your audience. And if they don't like the game, they're probably not gonna be entertained. I mean, if you were more entertaining yourself and you were actually a charismatic person that people wanted to see, it wouldn't be that way and you could play any game that you wanted. But that's not 
not the situation that you're in. That's why I think it would be a great idea if you actually did do something like Member Monday and see what games do and don't stick with your audience by just playing games on Game Pass since you already have it anyway. There's tons of games on there that I promise that you've never played and your audience would probably enjoy watching you play. And even if you didn't find a game that you wanted to continue playing for your other streams, it would still be entertaining to your audience to see you play games that take you out of your element a little bit, to see you play different types of games. But you're just too concerned about playing the new hotness. You're too concerned about paying full price for brand new video games just to chase trends, even though you say that that's not what you like to do. So, for example, you know, this season, they probably would have start Spider-Man, start Mario Wonder, start Like a Dragon Gaiden, start, start seven, eight games within a month, but only actually finish two. Well, if you quit doing all of the superfluous content that you do before, during, and after those gameplay sessions, you'd have accomplished way more in those games than you did in the same amount of time. It'd really help if you could play the game and read your shoutouts and chat at the same time. It'd also really help if you cut the podcast length. It'd also really help if you didn't take 20-minute bathroom breaks every hour. And if it's not a narrative-driven game, you don't exactly have to play it consistently. You didn't have to grind your way through Mario Wonder as quickly as you did. You could have played it at a much slower pace farther spaced out and people probably would have enjoyed it more that's just my opinion and maybe it wouldn't have worked out that way what do i know about dsp streams okay now as you guys know that's not me that's never been me when i start up a game right i kind of commit to trying to finish it there are a few exceptions to that for sure but for the most part when i start a game you guys know excuse me you guys know that the case is that i always try to finish it Regardless of what my idiotic hate watchers say, it's the complete opposite. I probably have fewer quitting of playthroughs than most content creators on this fucking platform. And especially for someone who's been around for 15 years, I probably have more completed playthroughs than almost anybody. All right? But, of course, that's not what you'll hear from the morons out there that literally say the opposite despite no evidence of that. Um... I don't think that having more completed playthroughs than any other content creator on the site is exactly the flex that you think it is. Because the quantity doesn't actually speak to the quality at all. People talk all the time about how you just put games on a conveyor belt and get them done as fast as possible and don't actually enjoy anything and don't actually provide any sort of meaningful content when you play them. You're just looking to get them done so you can move on to the next thing. You play any and every game that comes out just to chase those day one views and try and capitalize on a new game. It's very transparent. So of course you have more playthroughs completed than most people because most people actually take their time with games and enjoy them and have fun and make them entertaining. You just grind through them so that you can be done as fast as possible. It's gotten to the point that anytime you actually experience side content in a game now, you start calling it padding and say that they're just trying to artificially lengthen the game. Because heaven forbid you actually have to engage with the game on a deeper level than just play the story and be done. So that's the thing. If I, Now, here's the thing. With that philosophy, okay, if I adopted that philosophy, all right, I feel like it would be a double-edged sword. I do feel that in some ways that would probably benefit my business better because if I'm trying everything, if I just throw everything at the wall and I see what sticks and what doesn't, right, and what's, what's going to stick and, and, make, and work and what's not going to stick and what will fall down the wall or whatever, fall off the wall, correct? Wow, he really fumbled his way through that phrase, huh? You're going to end up with winners. You're going to end up with complete playthroughs of people that wanted to see those. And that's why you stuck with them, right? You're going to end up with half playthroughs, but that's okay because people got bored of it, then you don't get right. And then you're going to end up with games that you just tried once or twice, like, eh, whatever, but at least I tried it, right? So that way I, I at least have an opinion on everything. So he's acknowledging that there are benefits to this strategy and that it could actually help his business. This is actually rare for DSP to take somebody's feedback and understand it like this. Very rarely does he actually see the positives that come from the feedback that he gets and instead he just immediately shits all over them and sees the negative. So I'm kind of impressed with DSP right now. The hamster that operates his gin brain is turning the wheel. The cogs are spinning. But the problem here is I'm not a big streamer. That's really the problem, okay? And just like that, I take back everything that I said about DSP. He hasn't actually learned anything. I'm sorry I wasted your time. I don't have the flexibility where in a week I can buy three games. But how many games do you wind up playing on Game Pass that you could try out basically for free because you're going to be paying for Game Pass regardless. And if it doesn't work out for you or your audience, you could just skip it. And you haven't been. You've been seeing these playthroughs all the way through and you just don't need to. You could make that change right now for free. 
from now on, every Game Pass game that you play, you could just drop as soon as your audience doesn't enjoy it or as soon as you don't enjoy it. If you really want to do something, you'll make an effort to do it, even if it's baby steps, even if it's only partially. And I think enacting this plan with Game Pass like that is a great idea. This week, like I said, right now, okay? Right now, what I would like to do is buy both Mario RPG and Robocop, play both this next week. That would appease everyone because you get people who wanted the RPG that I originally planned. And if people don't like that RPG, come back tomorrow and play an action game with Robocop shooting shit, right? And that would be fun. So you get the variety. The problem is, look at the situation I'm in. I, for two weeks now, I've been behind everything when it comes to, to what I would normally have this time of year for my business. And it sucks. It sucks. I want to have the flexibility to do what I want to do with the business and I can't, right? There's tons of ways that he could approach this that might actually better the situation that he finds himself in. We've already talked about budgeting. We've already talked about planning. We've already talked about what I'm gonna start calling the game trial system for his audience. And I've said it multiple times now, he could have done that Halloween stream and it probably would have made up some of the funds that he now finds himself lacking. But just like always with DSP, he's not actually going to do anything that might better his situation. Instead, he's just going to beg and complain online until people give him free money. Because that's all he knows how to do that's all he's interested in doing so <clears throat> it's very frustrating you know right now i don't have the flexibility to do what i want i wish i did and so I, you know it's funny because i say to you guys well we had a slow day we great we can pick it up tomorrow and then we have another slow day well why do you think i say that because you're a filthy, ungrateful beggar who has a gambling addiction. That's why I think you say it. Because we've seen the bank leaks, DSP. Piece of Peace has an Excel spreadsheet of your tips month by month. We know how much you make in tips. You make more than enough money to be able to purchase all of the games that you would like to purchase throughout the year to play on your streams. Because this is why. Because now I don't have the flexibility to do what I would love to do for you guys. This is why I say this kind of stuff. And of course, people always take it the wrong way. Well, that's Phil being ungrateful. Well, that's Phil this and that. That's Phil being greedy. No, it's Phil wanting to do what's best for the viewership and for the business. And I can't. And it sucks. If you really wanted to do what's best for the business and best for your viewers, you would uninstall WWE Champions. It really is that simple, DSP. If you could just commit to going back to like a flip phone so you don't even have the option to play it anymore, you'd be much better off. You know, this sickness is really holding me back it blows you know that i was sick what can i do it was the worst cold i've had since i was in my 20s um likely it was covid right it probably was and there's nothing you could do about it you just got to push through it which i'm doing but it seems like i just haven't been able to recover you know when it comes to this aspect of it i'm here i've been here since what november 3rd so i've been here almost two freaking weeks since i missed the time but here i am and because i missed out now i can't come back in the way that i want to you know I'm so tired of this sickness arc, you guys. It really is exhausting listening to this guy cry and whine about how sick he was for actual weeks on end. Just move on, bro. It's your own fault that you couldn't play video games while you were sick. I've never heard of anybody being down so bad that they couldn't play video games while they had a sickness. So, you know, all I have to say is I don't know what to, what to do. I really don't know what to do in this regard, all right? If I had the full freedom to do what I wanted, I would buy both games, and I would play both next week. That's exactly what I would do. I would start with Mario RPG on Friday, then we would start RoboCop on Saturday, and then Sunday would be my react show, and then Monday, Tuesday again would be Mario RPG and RoboCop. And I would just alternate those games for the next several weeks into December. Like, those would be the main games that I'm juggling. And then at night, we could alternate. Like, for example, Friday, I want to bring back Friday Night Fight, so we're going to do Street Fighter 6 Friday night. And then Saturday night, we'd probably do Like a Dragon Gaiden. And then maybe Sunday night, we would do some Modern Warfare 3, and we would alternate that back and forth for a while. You see, that's what we would do. <clears throat> But I, I don't have that flexibility. You know, I don't. I'm going to be honest. I don't actually have a lot to say after he gave us a fictitious schedule segment that he would like to do. It sounds strange to even say that was a hypothetical schedule that he would prefer to do if he had the money, but he can't. So why would we even talk about it? I'm just, why? But I did want to leave it in because it's just part of the experience of watching DSP. Sometimes you get those moments where you really wonder, what are we even doing here, dude? Why are we doing hypothetical schedule segments? Now, if you wanted to help, yeah, support the streams. If you support the streams, we have a great supportive streaming day today. Then maybe I can get both games. You see? But that's how it works. And then when I say that, oh, my God, now Phil is e-begging and he's a terrible person because he's e-begging. Well, sorry that I'm honest. 
No, but DSP, honesty and e-begging are not the same thing. It's one thing to just tell your audience up front, hey, I don't actually have the funds right now to buy these games. It's got to be what it's got to be, and we'll figure it out one way or another. We just might not play some of them. We might miss a couple. It's another thing to tell your audience, oh, I don't have the funds right now. If you could really send me some support, I'd appreciate it. If we have any more low streams, I don't know what we're going to do. We got so many games coming out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to purchase them or not. It's a completely different situation entirely. I'm a small time streamer, man. I'm not some big time guy rolling in dough. You know, I'm not like these these streamers who can literally get every game free or they can afford every indie game. Do a, a, a Mighty Monday member day where they could sit there and they could play 20 fucking indie games that are all $5 each because they can afford to just piss away $100 in a day for no reason because they made $1,000 that day. You know, that, that, that's not me. No, maybe you can't afford to buy a bunch of $5 games, but as I keep saying, you could definitely download a bunch of Xbox Game Pass games and try a bunch of them out back to back on a stream or two. Please, somebody tell DSP that he could do this. You know, that's all I can say. That's, that's my reality. It sucks because for a lot of this year, this wasn't a problem, all right? And now this illness really did create this problem for me. And now I'm in this situation, you know? Um... So if you can want to support the streams today, by all means do. And someone said, well, do you accept game codes? Of course I do. Of course I do. If someone wanted to donate a game, like you wanted to donate Mario RPG or donate RoboCop, yeah, I accept game codes. You could email me a game code and I could, you know, I could use that to get the game, then it's not a concern. So the dude is outright asking people to basically just purchase the games for him so he doesn't have to. He can't even be bothered to save up money or budget properly enough that he can buy the games himself. And look, I get it. Sometimes your fans will give you game codes or send you something and you get to use it on your stream and that's cool and all. But what he's asking for is essentially a $60 tip. That's kind of ridiculous to ask anybody for. And you can argue, of course, that he's not directly asking that somebody buy him the game. He's not asking for a $60 tip. But he did just talk at extensive length about how he's not able to purchase these games himself. And it'd be really nice if he could play all of them. It's like standing next to somebody else's food and going, wow, that looks really good. I'm really hungry. I sure wish I could have some of that. That would probably taste really good. It's just shitty behavior, especially when it's directed at your audience like that. Because I'm telling you what I want to do. I want to do the variety that you guys want. I feel like that's the best case right now. Give you an RPG, but also give you an action game. Alternate between the two. Have the nice streams alternate between multiplayer, like Street Fighter or Mortal, uh, Modern Warfare. And then have a nice chill RPG like Like a Dragon Gaiden. I feel like this is a great balance, right? This would be an absolute great balance, and everyone would enjoy it because of that balance, right? Yo, that's the second hypothetical schedule segment in the same clip. This is insanity. The man is putting together the ultimate schedule in his head at all times of every single day, I swear to God. So there you go. But that's the situation. I can't afford all that. I can't, you know. I, right now, just for Friday, I can get like one, right? So what can I say? Now, here's the other thing too. I, I actually appreciate the suggestion that someone left on that video that said, why do you <clears throat> commit why do you commit to beating every game you buy? It's a good question. For me, you know, originally, if you remember, way back in the day, and this is like over a decade ago. Oh, Jesus Christ. Grandpa DSP is going to go on a back in time segment. He's going to tell us all about how when he started at the helicopter company, he was laid off in 2010. Blah, blah, blah. I swear this guy can't go 15 minutes without talking about his past. DSP, we don't live in the past. We live in the present. Why do you do things today? Why don't you just fix the things today? No one cares about what you used to do. No one cares about what you used to be known for. No one cares about how you used to be popular. I was known as the guy on YouTube who bought every new game, played every new game. It didn't matter if the game was complete ass or if it was super good, but I would commit to playing through it. If it was a game that sucked, I would just razz the game the entire time I played it, and that would create a situation that was funny. So people liked it when I razzed bad games, right? But if it was a good game, people, of course, enjoyed the playthrough because people liked to see me enjoy a great game. So it didn't matter. But I was the guy who would get the game early, or not early, but on release day, I should say. I would rush home, I would play it, I would beat that game within several days because I wasn't a live streamer. I didn't have timing uh restrictions and limitations of when i could actually play games i could just play you know play them off camera as much as i wanted right <clears throat> yes dsp you were the guy you did the thing you played the games people watched your videos you were known for doing something i guess how many times do we have to get this story i swear we hear it at least once a week at this point point. and again that's great when you did it back then or whatever if it worked for you it worked for you but why do you do it now what does that have to do with today why are you giving us a preamble to the answer to your question so that was my, that was always my, my mentality. Now over the years, 
right? What ended up happening is, you know, people people always have that mentality. This is what Phil does. This is who Phil is. And listen, when I'm playing a game, if I'm enjoying it, I want to finish it. That's just the truth. If I'm playing a game and I, I'm really having a good time with it, regardless of the amount of viewership I'm getting, the amount of support I'm getting, I still want to finish that game if I'm having a good time with it, right? Um, how would I ever do a Game of the Year awards countdown or a most disappointing Games of the Year countdown if I didn't actually play these games? I would, you know, you can't say a game's one of the best games of the year if you only played six hours of it and then you quit it, right? Well, DSP, if you didn't enjoy a game enough to play more than six hours of it, I don't imagine that it would be on your Game of the Year contenders list, would it? That doesn't exactly seem like a supporting point I would have used. And I don't think that you actually have to play the entire game to put it on your worst Games of the Year list either. It does kind of speak volumes for a game if you make it three hours into the game and every single mechanic so far you absolutely can't stand. So I don't understand how this is a relevant point whatsoever. But addressing the point that you brought up about you actually wanting to see the endings to these games, even even if you're not getting high support, even if your audience isn't enjoying it, there's a thing called playing video games offline. You don't have to be on a stream to play video games. If your audience isn't enjoying the game that you're playing and you still want to play it, you still enjoy playing it, you want to see the ending, you can play them in your free time. You don't have to make your audience suffer through content that they don't want to watch when you could just play it by yourself in your own time. So it's just something that I've always kind of been done is I, I try to finish every single game that I play. Um, you know, and I don't know, you know, maybe that maybe the case is that that shouldn't be the philosophy that I have anymore, right? Maybe that's the case. Maybe I need to change. Maybe I'm too stuck in my old ways and every other streamer and content creator out there has changed around me to find what happens best for their business and I just haven't changed, right? Well, you say yourself all of the time that you're just DSP who does his own thing and doesn't follow any trends and doesn't look at what anybody else is doing. He just does whatever he wants. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm too adamant on, on adhering to these things that maybe are my own beliefs or my own morals or my own principles. I don't think that you can justifiably say that finishing games is a moral that you can stand by. Because the word morals has a right and wrong associated with it, and I don't think that there's anything right or wrong about whether or not you finish a video game or not. I don't mean to nitpick DSP's vocabulary like this, but it is very frequent that he uses words that are just not appropriate for the context he's using them in. But really, nobody else cares. Maybe that's the case, because... The truth is, and this is actually what the person said in that comment. Again, I really appreciate the comment because it was a long one, but I read it and I really took it to heart. They were like, you do realize that in general, most people right now who give you shit for not finishing a game are just your hate watchers. And the only reason they say that is to, because they want to say something negative about you. I mean, there's definitely some truth to that. It doesn't matter whether or not he does or doesn't finish a game to any of us because the second that he doesn't, everybody's going to jump on it and make fun of him anyway. But again, it doesn't actually matter because if it's not this, then it's going to be something else down the line. It's just part of the game, brother. I do find that especially funny, though, because I know that there's detractors in the community, myself included, that don't actually watch the gameplay typically. I don't actually care about the gameplay at all. He sucks to watch play video games. He's not entertaining. If I actually enjoy the game, I'll catch the this is how you don't play but his gameplay is secondary to me I don't actually care at all it doesn't matter it's not really that people are angry that you don't finish a game it's that those assholes just want to say something negative for example they'll, they'll actually say something like I rage quit Mortal Kombat 1 well I beat the entire story mode I played a big chunk into the invasion mode and I played multiple sessions of the multiplayer how did I rage quit I literally played every aspect of the game I explored it all personally I didn't like the online play I said I'm not going to waste more time on it how did I rage quit it because you cried the entire time that you played the multiplayer and made it very clear that you were having a bad time. And it was the last gameplay stream that you did of the game. So you left in a bad mood and then never came back. You rage quit the game, bro. If you would have been cool, calm and collected and said, you know what, guys, I don't actually want to play this game. I don't find it fun. It's just not for me. I appreciate all of your guys' time, but I don't think we're going to be doing this anymore. That's completely different. But because you were filled with such anger and vitriol with the last time you played and then never played it again. Yeah, you rage quit. Exactly. I didn't rage quit it. I just didn't like it. I played a ton of it. Take a look at launch week. I played tons of like over a dozen hours of the game. Actually, I think it was like more than 20 hours of the game. So how could you say I rage quit? I didn't rage quit it. I just didn't like it. So I stopped playing it. But of course, my hate watchers say, oh, you rage quit. You rage quit. That's what they do. So maybe it's time to stop caring about that shit, which in truth, in truth I don't care what they say. Don't get it twisted. He absolutely cares what the detractors say for sure. He watches a lot of detractor content and you can tell. But I've always been of the mentality again that if I start a game and I like it, I would just keep playing it no matter what. But maybe that's not what I should do, you know? Maybe it's time to re to reassess, right? Maybe it is time to reassess. I don't know. 
What do you guys think? This is important to me that we figure this out. Because at this point, um, you know, I really don't want to be in a situation where we're constantly sitting around and saying, what game should I play? What game shouldn't I play? Um, well, DSP, if you don't want to sit around and ponder about what games you should and shouldn't be playing, you could just, I don't know, make a decision for yourself and play the things that you want to play or hand the reins over completely to your audience and just have them vote on every single game that you're going to play. I don't know. It really is one or the other. Just don't forget that your primary focus should be entertaining them at all costs. I have to make a judgment based on cost. I have to make a judgment. You know what I mean? Like this sucks. Right now, the situation I'm in is good and bad. It's good because I have so many options of good games to play. At least it's not like there's nothing to play where we have no idea what to do or screw. That's not the case, right? The case is there's too much to do, and sadly, I just can't afford to do it all. I would love to play these two new games for you guys next week, and right now I can't. If someone today were to, to be like, hey, I want to help you out. Here, I'm going to support the streams in a big way today. Now you can afford one of the games. That would help a ton outright saying that if somebody were to just give me the game that would be great thanks does it get any more blatant than that just disgusting behavior quite literally asking for handouts so that you could play a game when let me remind you this man makes six figures a year and currently has an xbox game pass membership with a ton of games that he could be playing at any point but it's not the brand new game so he's not interested in playing them and he's already squandered all of his money apparently or if someone were to say i'm gonna send you a game code today that would help a ton that would take Th that whole burden off and I said like, okay we can just play these new games next week right but right now I, I it seems like I have to choose myself right and that sucks damn DSP you actually have to make your own decision for your streams that really does suck I feel for you man I do I feel for you because I feel like no matter what I choose it's not going to appease everyone it's like they say you can please everyone some of the time but you certainly cannot please everyone all the time it's not possible and I feel like no matter what choice I make there's going to be people who are going to be disappointed because I had to make that tough decision. Do I play Mario RPG? Do I play RoboCop? Do I play a, a cheap game like Sea of Stars that's free on, on Xbox Live, right? Like what, do, or not Xbox Live, on uh, Game Pass, I should say. Uh, do I bring back Starfield because I already have that and it's been on hiatus? You know, what do I do? I don't know. I honestly don't know what to do right now. And this is one of the huge downsides to being so reliant on what game you're playing. If DSP focused more on just being an entertaining and interesting and charismatic person instead of the game so much, he wouldn't actually have this problem at all. He could play any game he wanted. DSP being entertaining and charismatic is kind of like water and oil. They just don't mix, you know? So that's the situation I'm in right now. I wish right now I could say, so here's the schedule, everybody. And let's lay it out for you. And you know what's coming up next week. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm going to say this. People really need to stop with the Baldur's Gate 3 bullshit. I've already answered that so many fucking times. At this point, the only reason that you would be spamming that and talking about that in the chat is because you want to annoy me. Because we've already talked about a million times why it does not work right now. Mods crushes Skull. Baldur's Gate 3 is ban on sight in this chat. It's always so funny to me how hostile DSP gets when people bring up Baldur's Gate 3 at this point. And I actually agree with him. People are definitely just bringing it up at this point to troll him, but I do still find it funny. And I definitely would watch that gameplay as someone who does enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 and knows that that playthrough would be absolutely abysmal. I'd definitely catch at least a couple of streams to see how bad it is. But yes, add Baldur's Gate 3 to the list of known detractors. It could work sometime down the line in the future. It could. It's not going to work now. I've got too many other ongoing playthroughs going on. We've got special events coming up. We've got big RPGs. I am just started one in Like a Dragon Gaiden. we got another Like a Dragon game in January. we got a Final Fantasy game in February. No, Baldur's Gate 3 does not fucking work right now. And just by spamming the chat, all you're doing is being disrespectful. So fucking stop. Okay? Really, just grow up and stop. I want to play it eventually. I can't play it now. It ain't going to work. So just stop. Okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. Sounds good to me. And by the way, categories. <clears throat> so, um, at this point, I don't know what to do, man. I don't, I don't even know. I feel like we should go on, and I have other topics to talk about on the show, so we should talk about those, and maybe get everyone to think about it, and we get your feedback, and I really need to think about it over the course of today. Let's see how today goes, because if today ends up being a well-supported day, you know what I mean? If I actually hit goals and stuff today, then there could be a situation where I can afford both games. And then there's no decision to be making at all, and we'll just play ball. I'll start with Mario on Friday, Mario RPG, and then we got RoboCop on Saturday. Like I said, we can alternate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
If I recall correctly, he actually made quite a bit of money on this pre-stream and wound up saying that he's only going to be playing Mario RPG now and that he's going to push RoboCop off into the future. So all of this questioning and pondering that he was doing was essentially a waste of time. Lord knows that DSP loves wasting all of our time. And in turn, I wasted all of yours by doing this video. I'm so sorry. But I guess as long as you enjoyed your time here, it wasn't a waste of time after all. There you go. But I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. That's, that's another thing about being a streamer like me, because I'm not a giant guy, because I don't have a giant audience, and I don't have giant amounts of income coming in every day. I don't know how today's going to go. It could literally be a great day today, and, or it could be not so good day today. And I don't know how it's going to go, and therefore I can't promise you anything, because I don't know how, you know, that's kind of one of the things about being a small-time streamer, but still making a living doing it, is you, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever happens that day. He always brags and brags about how he's a small time content creator and he's crowdfunded. He doesn't take any sponsorships. He doesn't collaborate with anybody. And he makes it sound so positive and fun, right? But then we get these segments where he makes it sound like it's a detriment to the business and basically one of the worst things that he's ever done. Why would you constantly brag and talk about something that puts you in these sort of situations? I just don't understand. Because if all of these financial woes could be taken off the shoulders of your viewers and instead placed on some sort of 30 second sponsorship ad at the beginning of your pre-stream, I think that would be a far better option. Imagine how much more positive curated gameplay style content we could push out if we could get rid of all of the Begmans. It would save far more time than whatever 30 second ad read he would have to do, but he's just too stubborn. And I can't really control that either, right? Right? I can't. I could have, a, you know, I'm going to play games today. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to chill with you guys. We're going to have a fun and we just don't know what else is going to happen. You know, let's see. Let's see what happens. And let's let's let it roll, I guess. And uh, by the end of today, maybe it won't be a rough decision at all. Maybe by the end of today, because today's gone well, uh, because, of the, because of support and stuff, I'm like, well, guess what, guys? I'm buying both games, and that's cool. And then I'll, uh, you know, we'll play them both starting this weekend. Or maybe not, right? So I guess we'll see. <clears throat> Well, I already spoiled it because, like I said, he wound up just saying that he was going to play Mario RPG exclusively and that RoboCop was going to be pushed into the far distant future where we may never see it again. Who actually knows? But hopefully all of you enjoyed the video because that's the end of it. Of course, it's big shout out to Duty Streams for the clip in this video. I really do appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, a big shout out to all of you guys for watching the video. I really do appreciate it, especially if you've made it this far. It means a lot to me. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. But until then, make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that snore text. Ah!